In today's video, we're going to revisit Shooting Tethered. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm remaking my most watched video, uh, which is a video that I made about tethering. And uh, I wanted to remake it because I think I've got a better process. I think it's much more efficient. And because you guys keep asking me about this subject, I thought I'll just make a, a brand new version of it uh, and get you up and running as quickly as possible. So shooting tethered, if you don't know what I'm talking about, that's when you hook up your uh, camera to your computer. There's several benefits from doing that. The two main ones, of course, are that the files are going directly to the computer. So you don't need to take out the cards at the end of the session and then upload everything in there. It's already there. Um, and you've also got a backup as well because they will remain on the card if you're using Lightroom, uh, which is what we're using today. Uh, but you'll also have copies onto your, uh, your computer directly into the Lightroom library. And then the most, probably the most obvious benefit, of course, is that you get to see your photographs on a large screen. Everything looks fine when you're looking at a little screen. For example, everything looks in focus. It's only when you look at the bigger picture uh, on a bigger screen that you get to see and just pick out little things that may be wrong with the photograph that you may miss on a smaller screen. So that's what tethered shooting is. So now let's go through the things that you need and the things that you need to be aware of in order to successfully connect your camera to your computer. All right, so let's talk about the camera first. You wanna make sure that your camera is supported by Lightroom for tethered shooting. I've got a link in the description. All the cameras that are supported uh, are, are on that list and that list will be updated as well. So you can check this in the future. But uh, also be aware that if you've got a brand new camera that's only been released, it may not be supported by Lightroom just yet. Typically, it takes them around a couple of months for that camera to then be brought on uh, and supported by Lightroom. So it's just something that you wanna be aware of. Now, if your camera is not on the list, it doesn't mean that it won't work. It just means that it probably won't work. But I have seen cameras plugged in there that are not on that list. And you just don't get all the functions, but you still get the transfer of images and uh, them being displayed on the big screen, which are the two main reasons why people want to tether. Okay, so when it comes to the computer, you don't need the latest and greatest. For my commercial headshots, I use a Mac that's, I think it's 11 years old. It runs an older version of Lightroom, but it doesn't matter because tethered shooting has been available in Lightroom uh, for a really long time. So you don't need to run the latest version of Lightroom. Of course, if you've got the latest version, it's always going to be better, but just be aware that you can run an older computer and if you have to, an older version, and it will still work fine. Okay, so I just wanted to point out that we're going to be using Lightroom to do the capture and you need to use Lightroom Classic. Lightroom CC will not work. It does not have a tethered shooting function. So you are going to need to use Lightroom Classic. Okay, so let's talk about the way that you connect the camera to the computer. Most uh, cameras are going to connect via a USB cable. Now be aware that not all USB cables are the same. You can get cables that are only power and they look exactly the same. They've even got the same number of terminals but they don't transmit any data and those cables are not gonna work. And typically the ones that you get with your hard drives are too short to use for this sort of purpose. So I recommend something like this. This is a Tether Tools cable. It's specifically made for this um, and they are very well shielded so you get very little uh, interference. And also because they're bright orange, uh, there's less chance of people tripping over them when you've got them draped across, across the floor. So there'll be a link in the description if you're interested in learning more about these. Again, these are Tether Tools. And finally, just a couple of items that you don't need, but they will make your life easier. The first one is an external hard drive uh, of some sort or any sort of external storage. Um, if you plug this in and you send the images directly to one of these, then it becomes a lot easier to just move around the images from computer to computer and you're not bogging down the hard drive on your laptop. So that is, uh, again, you don't need it, but it does make your life a lot easier. And the second is to get yourself a couple of these rubber mats. They're just cheap rubber mats, uh, but they're really handy when you've got cables draped across the floor uh, to just prevent people from tripping over them. Uh, you can put uh, a couple of these. Again, just cheap mats uh, will make the whole environment just a little bit safer. Now, a lot of people will use uh, something like gaffer tape to, uh, to tape the cables down, but this stuff is expensive. Uh, so you can pay you know, $20, $30 a roll of this stuff. So if you can save some money, you can buy yourself uh, you know, $4 uh, for a mat, just get a couple of these and you can just reuse them over and over. 
Okay, so now I'm just gonna plug everything together and show you how it works. Uh, but just before we do that, if I could just get you to click the like button if you're enjoying this video or you're finding it useful, and also maybe subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and you enjoy watching videos like this. So let's plug everything together and I'll show you how the whole thing works. Okay, so plugging everything in is super easy. Uh, we're gonna use this MacBook Air and a 5D Mark IV that I've got here. So just find the USB port on your camera and then you hook up or connect one end of the cable in there, okay? And uh, just uh, on a side note, these USB ports on cameras are super, uh, super sensitive and very expensive to uh, replace. So one of the things that I might recommend to you is this thing called a jerk stopper. It's got a funny name, but um, what it is, is also made by Tether Tools. It's a little clip that connects to the uh, side of your cable and you get another bit that connects to your camera where the strap sits. And what you do is these connect here like that. So now if somebody yanks on the cable, it's actually pulling on that bit there and not on the actual USB cable, which again, very expensive to replace. So um, just a side note, but now I've got the camera connected on that side there. And uh, it's just simply plugging this other end here onto the computer. So now that is connected, all I gotta do is uh, switch that on. And uh, what we'll do now is we'll switch over to the view on the computer so you can follow along there. Okay, so we've got everything connected and I'm inside of Lightroom. And again, just for the record, I've got the latest, or I got the latest version of Lightroom that, that I'm using here, which is 11.1. Uh, but again, it doesn't matter if you're using an older version, uh, the tethered functionality has been around for ages and it's gonna look almost exactly the same. There may be a couple of functions that are not supported in the older versions, but really what you want is to, to be able to, when you're shooting tethered, to be able to send the images directly to your computer and just see them on the big screen. And, and that functionality has been around since the beginning. So um, we're going to start a session now. I've got the camera switched on. I'm going to go to the file menu and I'm going to go to tethered capture. And then that sub menu or that sub uh, selection from there, which is start tethered capture. That's going to bring up a dialog box, which is really just an, uh, an organizational box. In here, we get to name the session. So I've got that as a YouTube tutorial at the moment. Uh, we don't want to click this little box segment photos by shot. Um, that's just going to create all sorts of folders and stuff and do some organization for you. We're not going to do that. We're just going to send everything to one folder. Uh, down here, you've got your naming convention. Uh, I leave it on the default one, which is the session name and then a number. So in this case, it's going to, it shows you a sample here. It's, it's going to uh, name the files YouTube tutorial uh, dash 005. In this case, it's going to start at number five, but you can start it at whatever number you want. Just change this number here. This is where we add the location of where we want the photograph to go, where we want the, the images to go. So if I click on choose, then it's going to open up uh, the um, yeah, uh, find the window in this case uh, on a Mac, and then I just say uh, YouTube tutorial. In this case, is the one that I want to use, so I choose that, and that means that the images are going to go uh, straight onto that. Now, if I had collections uh, and I wanted to put this into straight into a collection, uh, you can click on this box and it will let you select the uh, collection that you're after or that you want to put them into, and uh, and then you've got your metadata here. Uh, if you've got prepared metadata, you can select one of these. Otherwise, you can type in uh, your metadata in here, okay? Uh, and it will apply to the images. Disable auto advance. We want to leave that off. Otherwise, you won't see the images as you're capturing them. It'll make you um, move it manually, which we don't want. So uh, we're going to click OK. And um, you'll see that it, a message come up saying that it was, uh, it was going to connect, that it was looking for the camera. It did that very quickly. And then you end up with this floating bar down the bottom here. This is uh, where we controlled the camera. So in this case, I've got my camera set to manual mode. So from here, I can change things like the shutter, uh, the aperture, uh, and then I've also got ISO and white balance. And then I've got this other uh, setting here, which is uh, develop uh, settings, which means that if I, I, I can have Lightroom automatically apply a preset for me as the images are coming into Lightroom. Now this is really handy if you're working with, uh, say you've got a client on there and um, when you capture photographs, you are going to be capturing photographs 
um, you're going to get a technically good exposure. But that may not look like what the final product is going to be. You might go, on the edit, you might go really hard with, say, your contrast, okay? And the client sometimes may look at it and say, oh, it looks a little bit washed out and, you know, it doesn't have enough color. And that's just because they don't understand that uh, that um, during the edit, that's where we're going to introduce all those things. So what you can do is you can get a, uh, prepare a preset. Um, and I do have a video if you don't know how to prepare a, a preset, I'll try and link it somewhere in here. Um, you can prepare a preset uh, that looks a little bit like what the final image is, go is going to look like, and then you can just have Lightroom automatically uh, uh, apply that. And you, when you click on this, it, all, all your presets uh, are ab available here for you to automatically apply. So, But in this case, we're just going to leave it alone. Uh, and then th there's a button here, uh, the Live button. Now, this is one of those things where it has been introduced in a later version of uh, Lightroom. So if you're using an older one, this is probably one of those things that is not available to you. Um, doesn't really matter. It does make your life easier. So if you if you can get the latest version of uh, of Lightroom, it will be easier. And actually, let, let me just show you. When, when you click on the Live View uh, button, um, that is a live feed of the camera. I know it, do, it doesn't look like video, it just looks like an image, but let me just run over to the camera, uh, which is on the other side of the room, and I'll just wave my hand in front of it and you'll see what I mean. Okay, so you can see that that is a live feed. Now that's really handy for when you're shooting uh, things such as product, because it allows you to, on this big screen, you, you're seeing essentially what the photograph is going to look like. So you can move the items around, you can move the camera to try and get the right composition uh, without having to take a photograph every time and then make adjustments. This is live, uh, so you can just move things around and get instant feedback uh, if, you, if you're if you going to get the shot right. So I'm going to close this now here, uh, because we're not going to use this now. Um, but like I said, uh, I can change all the settings from here. Now, be aware that if you are on, uh, say, um, some of the other modes like aperture priority or timer priority or, uh, or, or automatic, you won't be able to change all of these. Uh, this is only because I'm in manual mode. So in here, you've got the, uh, the button here. This is the shutter release button. So when I click on this, you'll see that it takes a picture, okay? So that is now down the bottom here. You can see it. It's in my library, okay? And um, and what you can do now is uh, you can, you know, change settings, uh, change the, the, move the product around. And essentially, you've just, um, you've replaced a small screen on your camera with this big giant screen that you're using now. So it's very easy for you to be able to see, you know, how I got this in focus. I mean, you can go in and zoom right into a photograph and see, whether you've got the, the focus uh, correct or not. And also just seeing the, the whole photograph uh, on one big screen, it's going to make it easier for you to pick up things that are wrong with the, with the image um, that you may not necessarily see um, with the smaller screen. For example, you know, these little, there's a lot of fluff here on, on the product here. And uh, there's another one, there's a big one here. Now, you probably wouldn't see that on the back of, on the LCD on the back of, of your camera because it's just too small. So this is the, 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 the big advantage that you get when you're shooting tethered. And uh, let me just show you this functionality uh, that I was talking about before. So we're going to apply... We're going to uh, apply, um, let's just pick anything. I've got Dan, so I've got a Dan Beach 3. This is one of my presets uh, that I used to use for um, family photography. So I'm just going to take a picture now and you watch that it will capture the image and then apply this preset over the top of it. So here we go. Okay. And you can see that that looks a lot different from the uh, first image that we took. And again, this is just really, it's useful if you've got someone there or even for yourself, if you're trying to see, you know, um, whether you've lit the product uh, correctly uh, for the final edit. And, and you get a really good idea of what that final edit may look like. So... Um, I think that's it. That's pretty much everything I wanted to show you. Uh, and just be aware also, I am putting together a, um, 
a guide, a PDF guide that's going to go into a lot more detail uh, into tethered photography. So um, I should have that ready probably in the next six to eight weeks. So if you do want to get a copy of that, make sure that you subscribe to the channel because I'll probably announce it on one of my uh, one of my videos. Um, so uh, yeah, if you're if you're interested in getting that, make sure that you follow the channel, and um, and that way uh, you, you're not going to miss it. So that's everything I wanted to show you on. Uh, tethered shooting and if you've got any questions uh, the comment section below leave them all in there that's probably the best place uh, to to leave those questions or if you've got any comments as well and uh, yeah hopefully you found this useful okay so hopefully you were able to follow along and just on a side note i am making a um, a guide a detailed shooting tethered guide that will go up probably in another month or so when it's finished uh, I'll announce it on the channel, so if you don't want to miss that, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell. Uh, but it's just going to go into a lot more detail and it's in the written form, so some people prefer to follow uh, a written form rather than a video. But hopefully uh, this made sense to you. And if you've got any questions, of course, just leave them in the comment section below. That's the best place to reach me. Uh, otherwise, you can reach me through any of the usual social media platforms. Uh, you're going to find all the links in the description. And don't forget about ministryofphoto.com. That's my website where you're gonna find a lot of tutorials and uh, you'll also find things such as reviews and some downloads uh, such as Lightroom presets. It's completely free, so make sure you check it out. That's ministryofphoto.com. And again, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe. I wanna thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.